Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Polloi. This is the second part of my snow speeder restoration challenge as set by uh, Rareberg.com. Uh, Rareberg is a great site if you haven't checked it out. Follow the link in the description to this video and you can uh, go there and buy, sell and get lots of very useful information on collecting all sorts of uh, things including toys. You can also check out some of my uh, collection which I have listed up there for your viewing pleasure. If you remember in part one Rareberg uh, picked up uh, the remaining of a snow speeder and challenged me to uh, see if it was possible to restore it and bring it back to life. So at the end of part one I'd managed to clean up the snow speeder and uh, get all of the electrics working again. So in this video it's uh, now a challenge for me to uh, find a load of parts that are clearly missing from this ship. As if you remember uh, there's pretty much everything gone. All that it came with were the two uh, side thrusters and a couple of small bits so I'm gonna have to hunt down a load of pieces uh, to uh, build this ship and hopefully by the end of the video it'll start looking more like a snow speeder than it currently does. In the process of doing this restoration uh, one of the items I got in was a broken front cannon section for the snow speeder. Uh, the front and end pieces are fine and also the grey plastic cover is fine but the inner clear perspex tube has been snapped uh, and this is not fixable because it's been snapped in such a way that it's quite damaged and bent and this uh, it wouldn't be very easy to sort of glue this or anything because you'd never end up getting it straight again. So I thought the uh, next best thing to do was to try and replace it. So I went uh, online, I bought some uh, clear perspex rods as you can see here. These were pretty cheap. Uh, these were about 6mm uh, in uh, diameter uh, and uh, I think I, I paid about a pound fifty for six of these rods and as you can see they're pretty, they look a pretty good match. Uh, so I've carefully cut one of these down to the exact same length as an original uh, front laser cannon tube as you can see here. So it's the right length. Unfortunately this uh, new Perspex is slightly too thin. Um, if you look at the front you can see uh, the one I've got is about 6mm and actually the original tube is about sort of 7mm. I couldn't find one that that sort of diameter so I'm going to have to do a few little modifications to uh, make this work but it should all work quite nicely. So the first thing I need to do is sort of line up where uh, I reckon that these tubes need to go inside. So I'm just going to loosely put this together, as you can see, like so. Uh, and I've got my finger on one end. I'm just going to push the perspex in until it's at the right size. And then also push the grey tube in until it stops moving, uh, which is about there. And I can pull this out and I'm going to make a mark on the perspex, which is just about there. Uh, and I'm going to use my knife just to score it slightly so that I can see exactly where uh, that line is. Now what I need to do is to make sure this stay in place I'm going to wrap this end in a clear plastic sticky tape until there's enough on there that if I push this in place it will stay fixed in. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap the tape on. So I think that looks like about enough tape so I just need to get a uh, knife and cut off the excess so that it lines up perfectly with the end of the perspex. So now, now that I've cut that end off I'm actually going to jam it in the wrong way round. Uh, the original gun pushes in from the front, I'm actually going to push this in from the back uh, so that it should be firmly held in place and I can also then pull it uh, nice and tight. As you can see that's gone in quite well so I can now slot on the grey cowl. That seems to work quite well. Uh, so again we just got this end to fit and I'm going to use the same technique because uh, this is again is a bit loose so I'm just going to wrap some tape around the end of that and hopefully that will all be held in place and we will have a replacement uh, gun for a snow speeder. So again I'm just going to cut off the excess sellotape just using a knife here like so and then hopefully this should all fit in the end quite snugly like it does. And there we have it so as a replacement piece of uh, perspex tubing inside the broken gun and that's ready to go and it should light up just the same as the original gun did uh, with the light shining down one end of the perspex. Some of the parts I've 
picked up for this restoration have been slightly on the yellow side as you can see here this uh, front section to the gun uh, one side of it's pretty yellowed and the other side's uh, yeah just a tad sort of yellow uh, and in other bits like this uh, battery cover you can clearly see where the sticker was and it's uh, yellowed on the rest of the plastic so I'm going to uh, be using the standard sort of de-yellowing method that I've shown you in previous videos which is um, you can pick up 6% uh, hydrogen peroxide this I picked up in boots but you can pick, pick this up in most sort of uh, chemists and uh, shops like that or even uh, supermarkets it costs about a pound a bottle and this is perfect so what you need to do is uh, place these items in the hydrogen hydrogen peroxide and leave them in the sunshine for a few days now in this instance I'm actually going to be trying something I've never tried before which is I have here the glass for the front part of the snow speeder and as you can see this has got a yellow tinge to it I've not tried to de-yellow this uh, clear plastic before so this will be a new uh, new test for me so hopefully uh, I'll be able to give you some better results at the end and prove that uh, it works on all sorts of plastic. So let's go ahead and get this uh, into the hydrogen peroxide and put it out in the sunshine. And so here we have all the pieces after two days. As you can see, even the clear cockpit glass is uh, looking better. I've never done uh, the clear plastic in uh, the hydrogen peroxide before, uh, but it actually seems to have worked quite nicely. The other pieces like the canopy cover had some sort of fairly minor yellowing around the window holes, but that's all gone. Uh, the battery cover, there was a quite a clear line where uh, the sticker had been. That's now all back to looking yeah, pretty pretty good and then a few sort of uh, other little bits which were sort of mildly yellowed have come out quite nicely I also found a rear engine block um, in the meantime uh, and uh, I've stuck that in as well because that was a little bit on the yellow side so that's all, all looking quite good now so here we have all the bits I've managed to gather together so far to rebuild this snow speeder for Rareburg. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Toy Fanatic who sent me a few bits that I was missing. That's very kind of him. He received a Toy Polloi badge in the post for uh, his kind uh, donation. Uh, and I'm still missing a couple of little bits. So if anyone else can help me with some spares, then uh, do please get in touch. Uh, I still haven't found a second one of these and I do not have the harpoon uh, or the harpoon attachment. So if you can help me out, I'm happy to trade items or even uh, send you some toy polloi badges. So please get in touch. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll start putting this uh, vehicle back together. We'll start with some easy easy bits first, just uh, to get uh, sort of clear of some space on my desk here. So first up, I picked this gun up off uh, the internet. It cost me two pounds, so that's not bad. So again, that just slots in the back there. This I already had in my spares pot and I was uh, sent another one by the toy and queen collector. Uh, but I decided to use my, the one I had originally because uh, it was in slightly better condition so let's put that one back over the battery cover. Uh, we, the glass actually came with the ship and it wasn't too yellowed so I can just uh, stick the uh, rear glass straight back in. No, nothing needed doing to that. That just clips in place on the back there. Uh, the cockpit as well and the cockpit glass are an internet buy uh, from a website so that's pretty good not too bad a price either so I'm, I'm happy with those so that can go in place there uh, this is uh, the only rear jet I've managed to find so far so we'll slot that back up into the back there just get that in place uh, and then you've seen I've rebuilt one of these uh, front guns already so I can stick that one on there and then I have parts enough to build another whole one here uh, so I can just put this back together and there we go so as you can see the snow speeder is starting to look more like a snow speeder it didn't clip in quite properly let's get that clipped in so as you can see there we go it's starting to look more like a snow speeder now I've got one spare which is quite useful uh, it's nice and clean if I Put the landing gear down we can land it so it's actually looking pretty good uh, it's uh, like a nice almost box fresh snow speeder so join me in part three when i'm going to be working on some uh, custom stickers to make this look more screen accurate i'm also going to add some battle damage to it i hope that's been of interest to you and uh, thanks for watching <laughs>